Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler again. It is July 6, 2018. So in this particular post, what I'm going to do with you is explore some of the present trends that are ongoing in the Arctic. We're going to look at some climate change related trends and as well as present conditions. And to be clear, what we are concerned about for 2018, summer of 2018, is, is Arctic temperatures, Arctic sea ice melt, and Greenland melt. So to take a look at the current state of play over the Arctic Ocean, what we have is a, a number of warm air invasions that are ongoing and the primary two that we are looking at right now is a warm air invasion coming in from eastern Siberia over the region of the Kara and Laptev seas and funneling into a developing storm. Go look at some wind speeds here you can see that the wind speeds over these regions are increasing in relationship to the storm and looking at pressure we find that minimum pressures are, are in this particular storm are starting to dip into the nine upper 970 millibar range now we also have another warm storm event that is ongoing in greenland as a as a weaker storm enters baffin bay and brings about some downslipping winds across Greenland. And so what we're seeing is in southern Greenland, much warmer than normal temperatures in the range, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> in the range of the 60s and, and 70s in, in some locations. And, and warm enough temperatures to generate ice melt all along the fringe portions of the Greenland ice sheet and in southern Greenland. In addition, what we are looking at is, is warmer than normal conditions throughout Canada now and up into Alaska. And these warmer than normal conditions are expected to peak out in the 70s, possibly in, in the, yeah, it looks like in the 70s over Alaska. And then also a rather serious warm air invasion in conjunction with the Eastern Siberian invasion that is proceeding in central Siberia, which is expected to push temperatures up into the 80s or near 80s near the Arctic Ocean over the coming days. So this is a rather intense weather situation. There are a few dynamics that I'd like to talk to you about with regards to sea ice. Now, but before we do, I'd like to talk in general about the air temperature anomalies over the Arctic. And, and what we are seeing now is that, is that the Arctic is, is warmer than normal, nearly a degree Celsius above normal, which is rather warm for this time of year. The only regions that we see that are cooler than normal are north of Greenland here in the high Arctic, in the Baffin Bay region and Hudson Bay region, which has been consistently below normal, and in Scandinavia and eastern Siberia, which is which is a change. We, we had seen a ridge pattern develop in this region pretty frequently, but the ridge has moved over central Siberia, and a subsequent trough has developed in this zone. Now, looking forward, the GFS model expects very substantial warming in the Arctic for this time of year. This model has run a little bit hot, so in my opinion, we're more likely to see the near one degree Celsius above re readings for the entire Arctic continue, but, this does hint at a trend where we will tend to see very warm conditions in the Arctic periphery and over a large section of the Arctic Ocean. And this in includes continued risks for sea ice melt 
especially if the storm starts to become rather intense and you start to see strong winds blowing over the Karen Laptev Seas region. So, so presently, Arctic sea ice is second lowest on record. I'm going to show you the, the 2018 number here. And this is in comparison with, with recent years. And so we are, we are second lowest on record. And, and if we see, and during recent days, we've seen sea ice dive a bit. And, and if that dive continues, it looks like we could get close to the record lowest line. So we'll have to keep an eye on this. Now, looking at the Arctic Ocean in general from the satellite shot, we see, well, let's just talk about the Arctic region in general. What we see are large open water areas in the Chukchi Sea, in the Beaufort Sea and the Canadian Archipelago region, in the near central Siberian region, and a, a widening area of open water in the Kara and Laptev seas in association with a strong storm and strong warm winds running in. Zooming in, we also see a bed of uh, signatures of melt ponding, see blue regions starting to appear on the edge zones and, and brown and blue regions appearing in the, the Chukchi Sea Zone. It's also been a bit cloudier over the central Arctic, which has helped to keep ten temperatures cooler. So this is this is a bit of a, a boon, a bit of a counter trend, and might help to, to preserve sea ice, at least in this region, if that trend continues. One thing we should also point out is that we are starting to see a number of fires crop up in the Arctic zone, particularly over Alaska and over Eastern Siberia. So one other bit that I'd like to point out is that Greenland, particularly Southern Greenland, recently saw a melt spike. And it's been a bit cloudy there, so you're not really seeing much in the way of, um, there we go. So we get a little bit of bluing in the satellite shot under under the cloud cover, you can kind of see it over here, for example, near J Jakob Chauvin, a little bit of bluing and darkening on the ice edge side, and that's indicative of melt. And if we look at NSIDC, we find that recently, during the past few days, there was a very large melt spike for this time of year. We, we got outside of the two standard deviation range to around 23-24% uh, coverage of the entire Greenland ice sheet. And, and this is pretty strong even for recent years, although during July of 2012, we did see nearly all of the Greenland ice sheet experience melting. So, so we do have some acceleration of melting in, in early 2018. And, and that is in association with the warming events that we are presently seeing near Baffin Bay. So overall, the temperatures in the Arctic are above average. We are looking at a potential for a strong storm formation in the Arctic edge zone here near the Kara and Laptev seas. And this could wreck a lot of sea ice if it, if it really gets wound up. And, and we see warmth in Alaska and in eastern and central Siberia as invasion zones through ridge zones into the Arctic. In addition, we have systemic sea ice loss that has been ongoing in the Chukchi and Beaufort seas. So there's some potential that we could see near record low sea ice, and this is a situation that we need to watch.